Hey everyone, I hope you're doing well today. In this video, we're going to talk about statistical questions and distribution shapes. Now, while there's many different types of questions that people can ask, we're going to be focused on the difference between statistical and non-statistical questions. And once we have a better understanding of the difference between statistical and non-statistical questions, we'll talk about the shapes of distributions. More specifically, when we ask a statistical question, we get a whole bunch of different types of data, and we'll talk about the distribution shape or the shape of that data. While data can take many different types of shapes, today we're going to focus on symmetrical looking data, left skewed data, and right skewed data. And just to give you a little sneak peek of what these three shapes look like, here we have symmetrical looking data, over here we have left skewed data, and to the right we have right skewed data. Before we get into some examples and practice problems, it would really help this channel out if you could give the video a like and even leave a comment below. And with that, I encourage you to grab some paper, something to write with, and let's do some math together. Let's talk a little bit more about statistical questions. Suppose we have the question, how old is that sixth grader? If we ask that sixth grader or just one particular sixth grader, this is not going to be a statistical question. And the reason for that is that we can only collect one data point from that since that particular sixth grader can only have one age. Now, if we wanted to rephrase this into a statistical question, we could change the question and say, how old are all the sixth graders? Since we're asking several different sixth graders and we're going to get different types of responses or variation in data, then this is now a statistical question. Let's take a look at another one. How long can each of the sixth graders hold their breath for? Because we're asking this question to each of the sixth graders or a bunch of different sixth graders, this is a statistical question. The key difference between these first two questions is that one is only asking one person, whereas the second question is asking multiple people. When you ask a question to multiple people, you allow for variation of data. Here's another. How many siblings do you have? Now, if we're just asking you or one person, this is not a statistical question. However, if we wanted to rephrase this, we can say how many siblings do each of you have? Asking a bunch of different people, this is now a statistical question. And looking at a fourth and final question, how tall are all of the sixth graders? Now, if we're asking all of the sixth graders, which is a bunch of them, this is going to be a statistical question because we're going to expect to have variation of data or a bunch of different data points from each of the different people we're asking. The key takeaway here is that statistical questions allow for variation of responses or multiple answers. Now that we've talked about the difference between statistical and non-statistical questions, let's talk about data distribution shapes. As I mentioned a little bit earlier, there are three key shapes that we're going to focus on today. The first type of shape we'll look at is symmetrical, where most of the data is concentrated in the middle and there's less and less as we go farther away from it. The second type we'll look at is called left skewed data, and this is where the center is actually a little bit more to the right, and it's skewed because there's less on the left side. And a third shape we'll look at is called right skewed, where the center is actually a little bit more to the left, but there's less going along on the right side. What makes symmetrical data special is that all three of these measures of center are right in the middle. Now, a little differently, when we look at left skewed data, the mean is actually a little bit to the left, it's not in the center, which is why we call it left skewed. The median is a little bit more towards the right, towards the top of the curve, and in the mode, you can still expect to find more at the top of the curve. And for the third shape we're looking at, which is right skewed, we're gonna find the mean to the right of the top of the curve. The median is gonna be a little bit more to the left, closer to the curve, while the mode is typically gonna be found at the top of this curve. To try to remember which one is which, the symmetrical one is where the mean is right in the middle, the left skewed is where the mean is to the left of the top of the curve, and the right skewed is where the mean is to the right of the top of the curve. If you stay focused on where the mean is, that can help you with the names of symmetrical, left skewed, and right skewed. Now, an important concept to understand from these diagrams is the fact that when you're looking at symmetrical data, most of the data is concentrated in the middle, with a less and less above it and less and less below it as you go farther away, and when you look at left skewed data, most of the data is concentrated to the right side with less and less to the left of it. And finally, when you're looking at right skewed data, most of the data is concentrated to the left with less and less of the data to the right or above it. Now that we've gone over some background of these types of shapes of data, let's try some examples together. Consider the statistical question, how many cavities do each of the 10 sixth graders have? We know this is a statistical question because we're asking 10 different sixth graders, so we'll have variation of data. Now, if we're told that we're going to have right skewed data, which I'm telling you right now in this example, 
Let's try and draw a dot plot or a distribution of this data to show this shape. First, we can start off by drawing a horizontal number line. Then I'm going to put in the numbers 0 to 6. As for a label for this number line, I'm going to call this the number of cavities. Now, while I wrote the numbers from 0 to 6, feel free to go from 0 to 8 or 0 to 4, 0 to 5, as long as you have a reasonable number of cavities that a 6th grader could have. Now, what we're drawing here is a dot plot, and you can use any shape you really want, and most people use dots or x's. I'm going to use x's here. If we're told that the shape of this data is going to be right skewed, keep in mind that the data is going to be concentrated on the left side. Given that we have 10 different 6th graders, I'm going to use x to represent each of these 6th graders' responses. While I distributed the x's or each of the students' responses the way I've shown here, feel free to put your x's in slightly different locations as long as you have a right skewed shape. Drawing a smooth curve to kind of show you the outline of the shape of this data, we can see that in this scenario, if the data is right skewed, it means that most 6th graders do not have cavities. This would be a conclusion that we could make based on the fact that the data is right skewed for the 6th graders and their number of cavities. While it depends on the statistical question that's asked, in this particular case, it's probably better that the data is right skewed because that means that most of these 6th graders don't have cavities. Here's another question. What did each of the 15 6th graders score on the recent math quiz? Now, if we're told that this data is going to be left skewed, let's make a dot plot to show this. Here's a hypothetical number line that I've made from a score of 88 to 100. I'm assuming that all of these students did quite well. And I'm going to label this number line math quiz scores. Given that in the problem we're told that there are 15 6th graders, we need to put down 15 x's or 15 dots or 15 of whatever shape you want along this number line to show what scores they got. And we're told that the shape of this data is going to be left skewed, so most of the data should be towards the right. Drawing a smooth curve over these x's, we can see that this data is concentrated to the right, meaning that it is a left skewed shape. Now, if you were to draw a conclusion from the shape of this data, we can say that since the data is left skewed, it means that most students did well on this math quiz. If, however, the data was right skewed, you can imagine that most of these x's would be towards the left of this number line, which means most students did poorly and only a few students did well. So in this case, as opposed to the last one, right skewed would actually be a bad thing if we're talking about quiz scores, and left skewed would actually mean that the students did quite well. It's important to recognize at this point that being left skewed or right skewed doesn't necessarily mean something's good or bad. It really depends on the statistical question and what the scenario that we're talking about is. Here's one final question. How many hours did each of the 10 students spend on homework each week? If we're told that the shape of this data is going to be symmetrical, let's draw a dot plot to represent it. I think a reasonable number of hours to spend on homework per week is somewhere between 0 and 10 hours. And let's label this number line homework hours. Given that we have 10 different students, let's put down 10 x's or 10 dots along this number line. And be sure to put most of these x's in the middle with less and less as we go out towards the sides. Drawing a smooth curve here, we can see that this is indeed a symmetrical shape. Coming up with the conclusion here, since the data is symmetrical, it means that most students spend about 5 hours on homework, with roughly the same number of students spending more and less time than 5 hours. And that wraps up this video on statistical questions and shapes of data distributions. Hopefully at this point, you understand what a statistical question is and how you can get different types of responses, and there's three different shapes that we're focused on. When we ask a statistical question, we're expecting to collect a bunch of data from different types of people or different sources, and we're going to take that data and plot those points along a horizontal number line and see what kind of shape they look like. As far as we're concerned for now, there's three types of shapes that we're focused on, which are symmetrical, left skewed, and right skewed. While symmetrical data has the center in the middle and is, well, you know, symmetrical, left skewed data actually means that most of the data is to the right, and right skewed data has most of its data concentrated to the left. Now, I hope you found this video helpful in understanding what the difference between statistical and non-statistical questions, as well as the three different types of distribution shapes. And as always, keep up the great work, and I'll see you in the next one.